All right, so what you're gonna do today is we're gonna make a Art Deco inspired multimedia artwork that's gonna be based on a, loosely based on an insect, all right? So if you can see on here, you probably can't see, but there's masking tape, and I tape all the way around the outside edge of my paper. This paper is kind of a decent watercolor paper, but if you don't have that, you know, drawing paper will work, or, you know, whatever kind of paper you have, use the best that you have. If you don't have masking tape, um, just use scotch tape or, you know, whatever you can find. Um, reason we tape it is two reasons. You get a nice border when you're done, and it when the, when the watercolor dries, it gets a nice, um, yeah, nice flat paper because otherwise the paper does this and it just looks terrible. So when you do this, now you can freehand or you can do whatever shape you want. But remember, Art Deco kind of used geometric, so I'm going to start with a triangle. And what we want when when we do this, we want to try to leave some space towards the edges of our paper. Um, that just that just looks a little better and you kind of when you take the paint off you'll have a cool frame now I don't want you to color in this border so once you make this border don't color in now I would strongly suggest that you look up some different insects now when you do yours what I want you to do is I want you to kind of zoom in and I want you to go off the edges of your shape. Now I've done this in the past and students have really surprised me with what they have done. But uh, probably a good thing to do if you're having a little difficulty imagining what your insect looks like is to go in, go on the internet, look up examples of insects and use those so when you're drawing you kind of have a little bit of realism and it'll give it a little more you know things that you might not have thought of otherwise okay so I there's some kind of legs on mine now I've done this a few times so I can go a little faster than you most likely and if you'll notice this is sort of a flying insect. It almost kind of looks like a wasp. And, of course, I don't have any of my super awesome examples. So I'm starting fresh. So there you go. So now there, there is a start. Now, like I said, some students like to make multiples. And, I, and this is very geometrical. You don't have to be geometrical. By geometrical, I mean totally balanced. Like my triangle is kind of, you know sort of in the center and it's an equal distance from the bottom you don't have to do that at all now um see i had this sharpie uh this is called kind of a fine one but i also have this one right here which is a little thicker so once you get once you get your lines on there what i like to do and i kind of i guess i do the same technique a lot is then i go back in and I add some line. So here we go with Sharpie. Note these lines are the same thickness. So like I, I'm all about varying my line weight, so I'm probably gonna go back in and thicken some, and I'll probably add some thinner lines as well because I always like a variety I like a variety of lines I like a variety of color I like a variety in my artwork because if everything is the same it gets a little boring and I like it to be interesting and I'm also going to do the border
You can use a ruler if you want to. You really don't have to. So I'm going to go back in now, and I'm going to thicken up some of these lines. I'm going to get my variety. Variety. And then some of the lines, remember I want there to be thicker in certain parts, thinner in others. So maybe I'll go in and do that. You only have to do a little bit when you do this. By no means do you have to do the entire line. I kind of like to do this because then it makes certain areas stand out just a bit. So instead of the whole line being the same thickness, within even within that line you have variety. You can do this when you drew anything. Because remember, stylizing is just to, to take it's not realistic, it's turning it into a design. So when you do this, we're looking at Art Deco. And then I like to maybe in my wings, I'll just go like this. One of the real motifs in Art Deco, especially when it comes to jewelry, because Art Deco had all sorts of different, there was, there were architecture and jewelry and textile and wallpaper. But um, one of the things that a very popular motif or theme was the dragonfly. So if you're looking on the internet, when you start to do this, when you're starting to do some of your research, look up Art Deco dragonflies. So there we go. There I've got some different line weight. All right, part two. So first thing what I like to do is before I paint is I like to take an eraser and this is just how I do it, but I like to go over it and you can use a pencil eraser, the one on the end of a pencil, or you can just use you know, a pink eraser. And I like to just get rid of any of my pencil lines. Some people that do watercolors like to leave them. It's entirely up to you. But I like to get rid of mine. There we go. Alright. Now the next thing we're going to do, I want to make sure when you're painting this, make sure you keep this area white. And the best way to do that is be really careful. Because if you get paint all over this, it kind of, you lose your craftsmanship. This is only going to be as good as how much effort you put into it. So if you're sloppy and you don't try, it's going to be messy. And, you know, it's not going to look as good as it can. Now, when you're painting a watercolor, you need some paper towels. Um, so you have my container of water right here. Now, I'm at home, so I'm using these white paper towels. But you can also... I like the ones at school, the brown ones. Um, you can use whatever you have. Um, and then my brush sizes. I have a few different ones. Um, I have a, this is a small flat. You can see that. I have this kind of a, this is a round and then I have a larger round. But for large areas, you use a large brush. Small areas, you use a small brush. And remember, just take your time. Now I'm using watercolor. This is the kind of watercolor I'm using. This is called a cake watercolor. Um, you can also use your lid. This one's kind of dirty, but you can use your lid. You can wash it off and use that to mix paint. I, I sometimes I like to mix my paint right on the painting. So when you're using your watercolor, what you have to do, maybe I'll put this up here just so you can see, is you have to wake up your watercolor. What does that mean? Well, you dip your brush in the water dip it in the water and then whatever color you're going to use you just gently move that around and this is watercolor so it doesn't have to be super thick okay it's transparent the beauty of watercolor is it's transparent and that's called a wash really light little bit of water now when you're going to paint there's a few there's a few different techniques but what i like to do sometimes 
is I'll pick an area. So I like to wet it first. So right here, I'm gonna do this little section, triangle by the leg. And I'm only gonna do part of this. And then I'm gonna let you, you know, work on yours. So there you go. So I'm first painting this with clear water. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna pick a color. Let's pick what's a good color. Let's pick, a, is this purple? Let's see, is it a purple? Okay. So I'm gonna put a little, a couple of drips of water and I'm just gonna touch it and see what happens. Now, as you can see, if I put more water, I can make this, I can make it spread around. Now, when you wet it first and then you add water, that's called wet on wet. But you will notice that I'm stopping at the edge. It's only going to go as far as the water, as the paper is wet. Now, I just put a big glob right there. That's a little dark. So, this is another technique you can do. This is called lifting, which is I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to clean it off. And then if I take it and I take my dry brush, I can soak up some of the paint too. I can soak it up. I can even take what's on there, move it to a different area. So that's called lifting. Now watch, maybe I'll go into this area. Now I didn't put any water in this, so this is a different technique. This would be called the this is called the dry on a wet on dry. My paper's not been wet, my paper's just dry. And I can go in like this. Here's a slightly different look. It's a little more controlled. And then if I wanted to do this, I could also, in this purple area over here, I could take another color. Here, let's take a little red maybe. Wake my red up. And if I put some dots of red, what happens? It's almost like a sunburst effect. Put a little more paint on there. What happens? So as, as the surface of the water is wet, the water, as the surface of the paper is wet, it makes it spread out a little. And I get this almost a tie-dye effect. Wet on wet, almost a color burst. Now you can also do, so I added some purple here, but suppose I wanted to make it look a little darker. I wanted it to have what's called a gradation to go from very dark to light. So I'm gonna go back in, and I just put a whole bunch of watercolor right there. Really, really dark. Watercolor is concentrated. What that means is a little tiny bit goes a long way. Oh, still too dark. Let me do a little lifting. Ooh, lift nice. Lift it up, move it down. Maybe it's a little darker up there. Darker. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take my brush, put it in the water, and I wanna lift this a little more. Because I want it to look darker near near my insect's head. And I'm gonna take some of that, I'm gonna pull it off. So you do have to rinse your brush a lot. So there we go. Now, there's a lot more techniques on this, but as you work on yours, I want you to see what you can come up with. I'm going to try to finish this, and then I'll show you the last final shot. So good luck. Take your time, and don't don't be worried if it, like you don't think it's perfect the first time. You can always add more color. So good luck. Have fun with this. And as always, when you're done, share it with me. much completed close-up of my insect painting. So when you do this, have fun, take your time, um, 
And as usual, when you're finished, please share it with me, and I, I'll share it with everyone. Have a great day, and have a lot of fun painting.